Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, my Legion adventure number 41. And we are going to be covering two great comics today. It is Adventure Comics 324 and 325. Um, and this episode, I'm going to call this a little bit of Lalor and Luther. And that's a terrible title. I will change it before I post it. Because we're going to get to meet some new heroes. And we're going to get a visit from a great villain. Um, and I'm cracking open Illustrated Index of Legion of Superheroes Vought number 3. Uh, for my reference material. Published 1987. Um, by the amazing independent comics group. Um, Catherine Ironwood. Editor-in-chief. Um, it's a great editor for Eclipse. I've talked about some Eclipse comics. Um... I'm going to probably do an episode about Aztec Ace, even though it's not a superhero team book. But once I dig in, I'm taking a vacation in January, basically a staycation. And I'm going to use that time to read comics because that's what you do when you don't go to work. You read comic books. Um, so let's get going. It's been a week and this is the I'm a day late with this. Had a lot going on. I recorded a great episode with uh, Jennifer DeRoss about uh, the Gardner Fox, Murphy Anderson, Justice Society member team-ups in Brave and the Bold and Showcase, and my MP3 on Skype did not record her part of the conversation, and I am devastated. We have rescheduled in a couple weeks, and we're going to have that conversation again, uh, and it'll be bigger and better and a lot of fun. So that's why I took a break. I little had to pause. I was pretty upset by that. I wasn't planning... You know, I was getting some stuff together. Um, I've gotten some books in that have made me thought about what direction I'm going to take the show in, which I will talk about later. But so I'm just delayed. We're going to be back to this. And then tomorrow I'm going to record a Defenders episode, the first one in a couple weeks. And then I'm recording two things this weekend. Um, one with Ron, uh, where we'll talk about Bob Brown, and one with... Kirby, where we're going to talk about the DC uh, miniseries Legends. Um, so, a lot of fun. And there are other things to talk about, but I'm going to save that for the end of the episode. Um, so, let's get started. Uh, let's get the pertinent data on the next issue we're covering, Adventure Comics 327. Cover date, September 1964. We're, I'm almost alive. I'm almost alive. When we get to the um, 326, I think I will have been on this planet when that comic was published. It's got um, a great cover by Kurt Swan. Sheldon Maldorf is the inker, not uh, George Klein. Letter Irish App. It has um, Beast Boy, but not the one you're thinking about. Beast Boy, who's a superhero from another planet. Evil Lad and Gas Girls talking to Superboy under the lovely banner that says Adventure Comics featuring Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. I love that. I want a sign of just that or a poster. Maybe I will get, um, see if there's a good Legion poster, one of these old adventure comics. Um, there's some great covers, ones I love. Adventure Comics 300. Uh, if anybody wants to just find a copy of that and gift it to me, I'd be grateful because it's one I've never owned and I would love it. It's one of my favorite covers. But, and it's featuring, it's called, the story It's called The Legion of Super Outlaws. We have Beast Boy talking. We members of the Legion of Super Outlaws warn you not to interfere with us, Superboy. I, Beast Boy, can change into any animal in the universe. And then he, Evol, Evolvo, lad. Um, I, Evolvo, lad. God, it sounds like a car. I, Evolvo, lad, can evolve into any future being with a brain super, more super than Brainiac 5's. And then Gas Girl is saying, When I change into Gas Girl, not even your mighty strength can hold, can hold on to me. And Superboy is thinking, How would anyone stop these criminal legionnaires, the powers of their other members? And they're even more terrific. Okay, so like it said, it says this is the story is called The Legion of Supervillains. It's not supervillains, super outlaws. It's 17 pages. Part 2 is called The Battle of the Super Teams. Credits Mort Weisinger, Editor Plotter. Plotter, scripter, Edmund Hamilton, pencil, inker, John Forte, letterer, Vivian Berg, question mark. Okay. Roll call. Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, Chameleon Boy, Sun Boy, Invisible Kid, Colossal Boy, Super Boy, Ultra Boy, Mon-El, Element Lad, woohoo! Um, Super Boy, um, 
He's in a flashback to an untold Legion story and Shrinking Violet. Uh, supporting cast, uh, the heroes of Lalor um, are introduced, and it is Beast Boy, Gas Girl, Evolvo Lad, Life Lass, who can t- make things move, and Duplicate Boy. And the villains are Dr. Martin King and President Minister Vor of Planet Lawler and his unnamed aide. Um, and here... Where is it? Okay. Um, we're going to see the Heroes of Lalor again um, in different times. Uh, there's some little neat things, but let me read the synopsis first. A brilliant but evil scientist, Dr. Martin King, seeks to destroy the Legion of Superheroes in retaliation for the death of his brother, Jungle King. Knowing of five young superpowered mutants who are wandering the cosmos after being banished from the planet Lalor, he summons them to, Earth to assist in his goal. The use are Duplicate Boy, who can duplicate any superpower, Gas Girl, who can change into any gas, Evolve a Lad, who can make his body go forward or backward in evolution, Life Lass, who can make, an, an, make any inanimate object come alive, and Beast Boy, who can transform himself into any animal. Martin convinces them that the Legionnaires are tyrants who will force them off first, knowing that the homeless Lorens will fight to stay. The four Legionnaires then, on Earth, Superboy, Starboy, Invisible Kid, and Shrinking Violet, battle the strange youth and are captured by them and imprisoned in their clubhouse. Shrinking Violet escapes, warns her other teammates, and while Duplicate Boy tracks her down, his comrades discover that Martin King had lied to them and that the Legionnaires are not villainous. When Duplicate Boy and the Legionnaires return to Earth, battles are set straight between the two groups, and King is taken into custody. The the Lorne heroes are returned to their homeworld, and Duplicate Boy and Shrinking Violet, who have fallen in love, Vow to continue their romance. Um, you know what? I may have read this in a reprint. I'm starting to think there are more books of issues of these that if I read them, I only read them once and I don't really remember them. Um, I really dug this one. I My first kind of real memory of Duplicate Boy, I mean, he was mentioned at times in comics. I think he appeared maybe in a Grell issue. But was it during the Levitz Giffen era? During um, He popped back up when Shrinking Violet was kidnapped and replaced and she was not happy that her boyfriend believed the fake um shrinking violet and she did dumped him but this is where we get to meet him um i really like you know it's more good john forte art uh the some of the costumes are very you know they don't really put a lot of thought into them i think in some ways i like beast boys i do i really like his and i like duplicate uh uh, kids because I like the black and white diamond shorts. They're kind of cool. Uh, but it's just another great story and you get it. It's, you know, it. they spend time to introduce. It's a, it's a kind, I like that it's not, you know, Jungle King is back from the dead, blah, 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 but it's his brother. Um, it's a, you know, that they're building a universe and we're getting more and more of it. Um, the heroes of Lolo are, are cool. I like them a lot. Uh, and the story is a lot of fun. There's some great art, and it's neat to see Invisible Kid. He hasn't been in a while, and Sun Boy and Element Ladder getting a little more time. Um, there's a great battle in part two between Colossal Boy and a giant duplicate boy, um, and you know, it's you know the romance in it is quick. But then again, I am a big fan of Legion romances, so to see one blossom is kind of cool. Um, just a fun all-around comic. I really like it. Um, they do appear again in... Um, let me see. Let me look at my trusted the trusty notes because I did want to say this is... Uh, here's Lar Bear again in, in 339. Duplicate Boy may be translated... Uh, his real name is Quered Curlu or Ord Kulu or Kulu Ord. The real name of his uh, counterpart eventually was Shrinking, Shrinking Violet in the Legion of Superheroes is spelled Ord Kulu, Q-E-L-U, as revealed in number 354. Science police are arrested at, um, you know, this is cool. In the Legion Insects 2, the entry for Brainiac's adventure in 323 was amended to read Next Chronicle Pair. Oh, okay. They are catching their errors. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a cool little comic. It's worth a read. These, it's. I'm. I'm glad I'm doing two a week because it'll speed it up. But I'm really enjoying it. And this, these two together were really good. So let's move on to the second one. Uh, Adventure Comics three twenty five cover date October nineteen sixty four. Okay, I'm alive. 
Uh, I guess I was alive on the last one. This is when we pull it off the rack. It's pulled off uh, the rack uh, when I'm, bo I'm born. So it's been out by about three months. Uh, the name of this story is Lex Luthor Meets the Superhero Legion. Uh, it's another great cover this time. It's again Kurt Swan, Sheldon Malder, Venira Shop. Um, Lex Luthor is disintegrating with a ray gut, a dissolver ray, Superboy and Supergirl, as he says, ha ha. With this dissolver ray, I've disintegrated Superboy and Supergirl. Now I'll use the same weapon to destroy the rest of the Legion of Superheroes. Again, part one's called Lex Luthor Meets the Legion of Superheroes. And the second part is The Super Vengeance of Lex Luthor. Again, Mort Weisinger, Edmund Hamilton, John Forte, and maybe Vivian Berg. A uh, roll call is Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Invisible Kid, Lightning Lad, Triplicate Girl, Chameleon Boy, Brainiac 5, Sun Boy, Phantom Girl, Colossal Boy, Star Boy, Super Girl, Shrinking Violet, Super Boy, Ultra Boy, mon -El, Matter Eater Lad, Element Lad, yay! And Light Lass, supporting characters... Prody 2 and Chief Wilson of the Sign. Please, the villain is, the villains are Lex Luthor, but also Arturo, Incarno, and Moog, uh, the Brain Lords of the Planet Khan, uh, and in this oh uh, in the comic version, if I was reading this in a, the comic, there would be the Legion Constitution, but it's since I don't think that is in um, it is. It's in the back of uh, this volume. I'm on volume three of the archives. I've moved on to volume. I'm almost done with volume three. Where am I done? I finished. Wait a minute. No, I'm almost done with volume three. And it is in the back of that. And it's fun. Uh, one day maybe I'll read it aloud. How that would be stupid. But so I might do it. Just to be weird. Um, and think. We I, um, it would be funny. So let me read the synopsis and we'll talk real quick about this comic. Khan, which is K-H-A-N-N, -A, -N, a world inhabited by criminals, is run by strange being known as the Brain Lords. Matter Eater Lad and Triplicate Girl join there hoping to capture the Chief Lord, Artro, and take him to Earth for punishment. During their attempt, Artro and the other Brain Lords alerted the populace who tried to to prevent their escape. A strange craft suddenly appears to save them and all return to the superhero club S on Earth. There, their mysterious rescuer, rescuer reveals himself to be a young Lex Luthor who has apparently come visiting from the 20th century before the tragic accident that turns him into a criminal. The Legion vows not to let Lex not to tell Lex of his fate and attempts to entertain him instead. Monel and Lightlass inadvertently reveal the secret, however, and Lex is informed of his destiny. Still, they cannot alter history. Lex leaves them only to secretly double back and snatch away the, snatch away the wig which had disguised his baldness. He, his previous attitude was a charade, and his real goal is to ingratiate himself with the heroes and then kill them. Supposedly reconstructing the dissolve array he saw on display in the clubhouse, Lex summons various legionnaires to different locations and dis disintegrates them with the ray. Actually, he has built a, dis he has built a disguised Phantom Joan projector... From inside the zone, mon -El instructs his fellow members to use mental commands to force Lex to release them. This occurs on television before a galaxy-wide audience, and the heroes destroy the projector. They then allow Lex to return to his own ear in humiliation, a laughingstock on a hundred worlds. I really dug this comic. Really did. And I don't think I've, um, I've read this one. I really think this is one of the ones I've, I've missed. Um... And it was just a lot of fun. It was silly, Silver Age, Lex Luthor, dumb stuff, man. Lex, I don't know how he became a supervillain because his, his plans suck. Um, and no, this one did not suck. But it's just weird. It's kind of silly. It's very much of its time. Uh, the John Forte arts, it's okay. It's a little stiffer than normal. I like that he did instead of a time cube, he has a time tube. Um... You get to see the heroes, but then Star Boys in it. Mon Matter Eater Lad's back, but you know, it's just great. There's some good stuff. There's some good stuff. Um, Superboy and Supergirl are both in it, um, and he is a laughing stock. It's just a silly little comic. These things are great. I hope you're reading along with them. Um, uh, this one's got some great art. I'll put up what I can find on uh, on it. But you know, it's you know, I you know when I was reading it. Uh, when I was summing through it and before I read it, I was kind of going, oh, they meet him before he's a bad guy. I didn't know that because I didn't remember this issue. And it was, I was a little fooled by it, you know, and I've been joking, and I've been joking recently that, you know, this, there is a formula to these stories and it's very repetitive. 
but that's you know people were reading getting one every three months and it was disposable you know it's not like nowadays how we see comics especially guys of my generation you know we had continuity and continuity changed stuff like that and we had very became very involved in um, bigger and better and you know and the art form evolved and became something I'm a big fan of the stuff from like 1972 till about 2000 it's my kind of maybe a little early you know I want to get through the John I get through John's uh, John's JSA and um, Robinson Starman is kind of where I get a little hiccup after that I'm a little lost and there's some 90s stuff I really didn't like some early 90s stuff I'm kind of rediscovering it but this stuff was disposable, uh, short, sweet comics. And these are these two ones. This Lex Luthor one's a lot of fun. Um, and I really enjoyed it this time. And I know I say that a lot because I do. It's Legion. I love it. But this one, it was a little different because, you know, I'm, I'm catching ones I haven't read before. So next up, we've got um, Adventure Comics 325. Let me get to it. Um Oh, 326. Wait a minute. This is 3... Oh, no. Yes, this is 325. 320 since the revolt of the super... of the girl legionnaires. Which will be fun. Um, it's a short one. And then we're going to do a Superboy. Superboy 117. Superboy and the Five Legion Traders, which is a classic. And it's got Kurt Swanner. So that's good. So I'm hoping you enjoy this. So sorry. Again, it's been uh, eight days. I try to do three a week. Um, and miss some weekends, and I know that, and I apologize, but it's just, you know, it's a lot, and I'm still doing Galfrey's Most Wanted. I'm shifting from Twitter to Mastodon. I'm going to stay on Twitter uh, until it becomes a ghost town. But I'm going to start focusing on Mastodon, so if you're not on Mastodon, follow us there, or follow me on Instagram, at Stop Let's Team Up. Um, on uh, Mastodon, I'm at JSA4E, uh, at Mastodon.world. Uh, it's it's a night I'm like the app I'm enjoying it it's a little more mellow I'm not feeling all the tension and pressure of you know I be honest I don't get harassed I don't see a lot of racist crap I'm very uh, liberal with my use of the block and the mute of people who are bad so I've, I've been fortunate but fingers crossed who knows what's coming and I just you know a lot of people are leaving and I'm gonna follow them because I'd rather it's those nice people I've met on Twitter that I hope feel I have a loyalty to and I want to converse with than Elon Musk and what he's going to make of it, you know, good or bad. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. So that's that. Um, today is record, as we record this, it was announced today that Carlos Pacheco has passed away at 60. Um, I first discovered his art, um, with Avengers Forever and Aeros and Aerosmith, his the thing he did with Kurt, two things he did with Kurt Busiek, and I fell in love with his art. And I've read some of the stuff he I did a lot, read a lot of the stuff after that. Um, I jumped in and out of his cap, I jumped in and out of his Fantastic Four. I did love Virtue and Vice, his JSA JLA uh, trade back uh, crossover, absolutely freaking stunning. And um, Age of Ultron, he did some of that. These are some big events. Um, he was a amazing artist i i hold him up there without the out like at the alan davis is uh you know a little below george you know george prez the phila menez john byrne to me he hits that superhero sweet spot of the way i like art cockrum he's he's i put him in that tier for me because that's the kind of art i like and it's he was amazing artist and he's going to be missed um, you know, I was, I don't know what Kurt Busiek's going to do with S with Aerosmith volume three, cause I know that that was planned. I hope they continue it in and at least and dedicate it to him. Um, he will be missed. Um, so that's that, uh, today I got, uh, golden, new golden age, number one, people have been chalking about it all over Twitter. And I got, I, I normally wait till Friday or Saturday to get my comics, but I made my wife drive by and get them. I think it's an amazing comic, and um, I just really have, I did it a quick read. I'm gonna now when I'm done editing and posting this, I'm gonna give it a really good read. Um, it may be part of the discussion um, Saturday. I'm recording a couple things, but I might record my review of it 
and put that out Saturday. I think I will. And maybe I'll record that tomorrow and have it ready. And maybe drop it Friday. Because it's an important comic to me. It is Justice Society. It's the return of, the, of a H- Helena Wayne Huntress. A new one. And 13 new heroes that have been stolen from us but reinserted. Uh, kind of like Triumph. Where they're retrofitted into the universe and I don't care. They look great. I'm looking forward to the Justice Society and the Stargirl series, which I will be covering as the issues come out because to me, it's it's what I love and I'm going to back gab about it. So again, tomorrow is the Defenders. Uh, I think I'm going to do three issues, uh, the Return of Zemo and then the Squadron Sinister story real quick uh, to get caught up and I don't want to stop, I don't want to stop on a cliffhanger. I'm going to, I may do onesies and twosies and threesies as we go through. Um, but that's it. So again, again, there's an episode coming out about the amazing Bob Brown, me and Ron from fantastic comic fan. will be talking about Mr. Brown. I knew him from defenders and black widow. And he drew a lot of the early Avenger comics I read, uh, in the Engelhardt era. And he's a great artist. And I think he is, um, uh, forgotten and overlooked, uh, and I think that's sad. So me and Ron will do some amazing research, and I will read a handful of comics and then tell you how much I love them <laughs> because that's what I do. Because I, because that's that's how I, you know, I look at it. In um, a lot of the thing is like, did it give me joy? Did it not? Did it engage me? Did it not? Um, I'm not as um, how would I do it better. As I am when I talk film or like uh, and Doctor Who. Oh, also check out Strangers in Space. It's a great podcast. Jar Southall, uh, Ian, Mark, uh, all of them. Simon do a great podcast, uh, and they cover music and Doctor Who. And I am like the foreign film correspondent. And during the pandemic, me and Jr. did a lot of talking about post-apocalyptic movies. But we talked The Godfathers, and so I will put a link to Strangers in Space, that episode, in when I post this. Uh, it was a great conversation. I had a blast talking to JL, JL. So, um, JL, and it was just amazing. But folks, again, Defenders, Bob Brown, Strangers in Space, Gallifrey's Most Wanted, oh, Earth 2 podcast. I'm going to uh, re- listen, 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 tighten up the defense. Lots of great stuff out there. I've been playing catch on tighten up the defense. Um, and the first person I friended on Mastodon was Tighten Up the Defense, which I felt I thought was very cool. So until then, folks, you know what I've always say: be smart, be safe. For the love of whatever, be kind another one to one another, and read some freaking comic books.